Brethren, let us commit this moment into God's hands. Let us commit this moment into God's hands. That the Spirit of God will prevail in this moment. Welcome and acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, we reverence you. Lord, we give you all glory, we give you all adoration. We bless your name, O oh Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I surrender myself to your ordinance, O oh Holy Spirit. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Father. Let this message be message from you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Good morning again, brethren. Good to see you all. Our message title this morning, I hope I got it right, is Achieving the Milestone of Christian Journey. Achieving the Milestone of Christian Journey. And I have a very short Bible reading from Luke 10, 38 to 42. Luke 10, verse 38 to 42. Zachary, you can read for us. Luke 10, chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. No, Luke 10, okay, verse 38 to 42, okay. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked him, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. Amen. Brethren, I want us to have it differently today, more like a family discussion, reminders, and maybe nuggets here and there. So relax your mind and uh, take yourself out from the usual practice and mindset of marking out time to say, oh, it is pastor's uh, period on a Sunday service. We know we're in the preaching we start and uh, when it will likely end. Our usual tradition is to pick out pen and your diary and we glue on to the pastor and start writing notes. Even though some of the messages and the Bible quotes, we never go back to go through them. And when they ask some of us about uh, the message that was preached a day or two after, <laughs> usually we draw blank. Please use this moment from 11 a.m. going forward to present yourself and indeed connect with the Holy Spirit. Connect with the Holy Spirit, reject and cast away every spirit of distractions. This moment is sacred. Every Sunday is unique. Try to capture it and run with it. There are moments the Holy Spirit is making certain proclamations or pronouncements in the course of the message through the messenger. And we are expected to say amen or shout a big hallelujah. But because we are engrossed in something we in something, we just got engrossed in something. Uh, momentarily, we get detached from, 
from, from, from the crews. It may even be as important as trying to correct a typo in what you're writing or spelling or trying to recap actual verse that was uh, past mentioned. You totally miss out the timing of the amen or the important declaration that was made last. Brethren, that moment is gone and it could be your moment. And in this uh, era of technology, you have every opportunity to complete your notes as you want it to be, because everything is recorded, both on Facebook, YouTube, and other devices. But what cannot be recorded or played back is the essence of the Holy Spirit this moment. The presence, as the Holy Spirit is hovering around this moment, it cannot be recorded. So we should learn to capture it personally. Same atmosphere will not be repeated twice. You can play the, sun, uh, the video of this Sunday, June 13, and make up your notes on Monday or Wednesday or any day that you like within the week as you are relaxing. But you cannot bring out that, this special moment of Sunday that came with the visitation of the Holy Spirit. I'm likening the case of note-taking to the case when Jesus visited Mary and Martha. Just like cooking dinner for your special guest is important, so also note-taking is important. But we should be careful so that we don't misplace the priorities of connecting with the Holy Spirit and hearing the message undistorted. because that should be our topmost priority. Let us look at it differently again, at the analogy of uh, the 10 virgins, Matthew 25, one to 13. Sister Clara, do you want to read that or you will Matthew skip? 25, one to 13. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lands and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lands, but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lands. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At night, the cry rang out, here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied, there may not be enough for both of us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know the day or the hour. Amen. Amen. I brought out this analogy because um, the so-called foolish five didn't go out on a stroll. In their calculation, they went to get oil, which is important also for the alarms, but was a wrong timing, and they missed their moment with the bridegroom. Brethren, what are we doing now that is distracting us from that rare moment with the Holy Spirit? Just think the importance to you of what you may be doing that distracts you from this moment is no justification. I remember back then in some churches, there is usually free movement anytime during the service. You know, you can move, go to ease yourself, go out, come in like that. 
But the moment it is time for the pastor to deliver the message, you will see the ushers will take strategic positions to halt movements in and out of the sanctuary. It is for a reason, not just an administrative practice, because that time it's very, very sacred. Hallelujah. So I beg us, brethren, let us attach the sacredness of this period. Every other thing that we consider important, there is nothing that is as important as being connected spiritually when the message is going on. If you miss or skip a moment in that uh, flow, there is no way you can reconnect back. Amen. There are some activities that we that may have affected our priorities as Christians. Let me take number one again: soul winning. Are we using opportunities as they really come? to preach Christ, or we engage more in discussing political correctness for or against. It's like uh, the moment soul winning is mentioned, our thoughts goes to going on the streets and sharing charts and booklets that most people are not willing to collect. How about our close neighbors? And those colleagues who are now very close to us in our workplace or even our business, have we tried to introduce Christ somehow to them using that rare opportunity that we have? Let me take it the other way around, even to the pastors on the pulpit. These days, you see most pastors, uh, they attach more time in sermons. And instead of preaching eternity, the emphasis is more on prosperity. The time that would have been spent in preaching eternity, winning souls, we spend it more in drawing so much emphasis on prosperity, more like turning the church into a, a Ponzi scheme. If you put in more money, God will make you rich overnight. Sermons are now ended with only information on bank details, POS and uh, Zelle numbers, instead of truthfully engaging in altar calls and soul winning. Brethren, the good Lord is calling us this morning, is bringing to like a reminder to us, both to ordinary church members and the church leaders, that every opportunity we have, we should use it to talk about eternity, to talk about soul winning. And he will do the rest. Amen. I said this should be like more like a family discussion. So I have some points that I, I will be throwing out here. Speaking of forgiveness, my brethren, genuine forgiveness does not imply that you should go back to business as usual or that we should develop a kind of dementia, but rather that we should give glory to God for the lessons that we have learned from such experience and acquitting our offender from the perceived judgment and persecution. You know that in most cases we put 
our offenders on our own cross. All we want from, for the person is punishment. You are interested in the person's uh, negative stories. Anytime you hear things are not going well with a person, it becomes like jubilation of victory for you. You hear that he has lost his job or his house is going in for closure. You turn and say, good for him. He will suffer for his bad deeds unto me. You start boosting. My head will catch him. My God will continue to fight him. Brethren, we are just in captivity of unforgiveness. Learn to pray for your heart to be healed so that your offender will be set free. As you're setting your offender free, so also you are being freed. Amen. Another point here I have here, it's uh, more like number three, to identify the true essence of your coming to God's presence for worship. At every point in time that we come into his presence or that we have need to come to his presence, let's always be prepared and joy joyfully come unto his presence. Don't make it look as if uh, if you have your way, you wouldn't have been in his presence in the church or in any fellowship. Let's come with high expectations. If you are coming for fellowship, learn to release yourself to the Holy Spirit. Don't focus on mundane things. Don't focus on the eloquence or vocabulary of the messengers. Or maybe the dressing. Or you get carried away with the ambience of the environment. Like when we used to maybe go to a church environment, you're more interested in the church environment, the ambience, the beauty, and the state of uh, the art of uh, the equipment, physical attractions. Brethren, they are calling on us this morning. The Most High God is reminding us this morning that we should be connected and wired up spiritually when we come for fellowship. I remember that there was a time some years back that, that I was in Ghana. I, I attended one church in East Legon in Accra. When I went there, my purpose of going to that church was because... Uh, the person who was uh, helping my company to get business sent me like an invite and such invite, you, you, you take it so serious. It's more like a networking. But the moment I stepped into the church auditorium, brethren, I didn't know where the front row or the back row is. Because as I sat, I saw the pastor directly in front of me. And even when I have cause maybe to look back, I still see the same pastor facing me backward. You know, like that. And all the time I was in the church, I keep wondering where the music and sounds were coming from. Because everything there was of high tech, including the lightning, the lighting. Unfortunately, I couldn't remember what message was preached that very day. But the picture of the ambience of that environment keeps resonating in my mind. Such places when we will come out and someone asks you, how was the service? You will boldly and gladly respond, oh, it was wonderful. What was wonderful? Whereas truthfully and spiritually, you didn't gain anything. We were just distracted. We were just carried away by the ambience, by the looks and everything going on there. There was no opportunity for you to be connected spiritually. 
God is telling us this morning that the topmost importance for worshiping him is to be fully connected spiritually. Amen. I still want to draw our attention again to activities like waiting upon the Lord through fasting and prayers. As Christians, what end results are we attaching to our fasting and prayer? Are we doing it to fulfill the church doctrines? To be in the good books of the pastor or let me even draw it closer home. Because we have attached uh, so much uh, faith to the efficacy of fasting and praying that when we do it, certain expectations will be fulfilled. Like someone fasting to get a job or get married. When it happens, we say, I knew it. I knew it. It was going to happen because I fasted and I prayed so much. Brethren, we are reminded this morning that our driving force to embark on such exercise should be a tool towards building our faith in God Almighty. Not that we are attaching the faith to the exercise that we are doing that. Oh, if we do it, something must be fulfilled. Whether it's fulfilled or it's not fulfilled, the emphasis should be that we have faith in our God Almighty. And be, it should be drawing us closer to God. And every other thing will just be additional. We are told to seek for the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Every other thing will be added unto us. Brethren, I beg each and every one of us this morning, including myself, that we should serve God with perfection. Perfection as our benchmark in line with Matthew 5.48. Be ye perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. We should not serve God where only it is convenient or particularly attached to a material gain that we're expecting. Amen. Hallelujah. Brethren, let us pray this morning that God Almighty will make us to be focused in what is key and put purposeful to his kingdom. To Always do that which is needful in its presence. Let that be our prayer this moment. That God Almighty will make us to be focused in what is key and purposeful to his kingdom. To always do that which is needful in his presence. Let us pray also again that as we come in, in his presence, let the rain of the Holy Spirit fall over us. The rain of the Holy Spirit, let it come over us. That will be wired spiritually and walk according to the dictate of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you all glory. We bless your name, O oh Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you direct our activities, O oh Jesus. You order our steps, O oh Father, as we worship you, Lord. As we come in your presence, O oh Jesus, we come against every spirit of distractions. That which will make us to miss our blessings. 
that which will make us to miss our connection with the Holy Spirit. We come against it in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to you, Father. Glory be to you, Lord. We worship you, Father. Hallelujah to you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Brethren, I said it was going to be like a family meeting. It was going to be a short discussion this morning. It was not going to be business as usual. I surrender to pastor now to finish up the rest of the service. This is the little message I have with me here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise and we thank you for that uh, uh, apt and timely reminder of what is necessary, what is most important in coming together or having a relationship with you. Just as we have said right from the beginning of the COVID uh, issues, all we need to do is to come I have a personal relationship with the Holy Ghost. And the COVID lockdown was an opportunity offered to us for a whole year to wait on you to recalibrate, reconstruct that relationship because we've been drawn away by many things, many legitimate things. Nevertheless, they are a distraction that pulled us away from you. We are so busy with our career, with our job, with the family issues, businesses, and in fact, even religious issues. You are all distractions, denying us that quality time with you that has separated us and put a gulf between us. That the gulf that would have denied us the rapture experience when the Lord comes. I've been talking to us for one year and now I'm talking to the rest of the church world over. We thank you for your son that you have laid this on his heart to bring us to another remembrance again of the need for that relationship Father, if it were not important, you will not remind us. The fact that this is recurring again and again and again and again means Jesus Christ is knocking at the door of our hearts. Many of us are mindset to go back to business as usual. We can't say that enough. It's no longer business as usual. It's a transformation of seasons, of eras. In the Old Testament, you see God relating to nations. In the New Testament up to this time, you see God relating to church. And now we see a changing of God to relating to individuals. So some of us are slow in connection with the heart of God. Well, that is understandable because every time of change of God, some people will be slow at getting at it. Some people will never get it at all. While some people will catch on it right from the beginning. We thank God for this message, a reminder and exhortation to focus on that which is most needful. We thank you for your son and we pray that whatever virtue he has lost, Father, replenish upon him the anointing 
or the incredible work you're doing in his life, that we are witnesses of it. We thank you for your church. This is a humble, little church. But we can hear your voice here. It is true, as the Bible states, that the road that leads to hell is very broad, and many people find, many people flock into it. But the road that leads to the kingdom of God is very narrow. It's straight. Straight means tight. And only few people find it. So that open our ears to hear. Refresh and, 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 and uh, uh, circumcise our heart to understand and to believe. We thank you for your church. As we come before you, we bow down before you. We worship at your feet. Bending our knees and bowing our heads. Prostrating between, before you, between the throne and the altar. Altar is the place of death and sacrifice for the flesh. While the throne is the place of acknowledgement, appreciation recognition and submission to the King of Kings, the eternal Father, the Lord of all. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this message this morning and we receive it wholeheartedly, joyously, seriously, in Jesus name, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are remembering that next Sunday is Father's Day. We are going to have um, Vincent minister to us, but they are based in London. I was hoping they would minister live from London, but they said they were not able to do it now because their instruments are many. And when they begin to play, the capacity is not big enough for everything to come through well. So it's a little bit distorted. So what they are going to do for us is this. They will lead our praise worship for maybe 15, 20 minutes. Not live. Right now, we are preparing the songs they're going to play it, they're going to perform it, but they're going to record it for that purpose. They put together that package for us. The leader, the founder, my senior brother, as I call him, they're very close, John Watson, was supposed to give us the Father's Day word. But he appeared to me and said, he is on sabbatical. God placed him on sabbatical. He has been having health issues and the Lord said, rest. Don't do anything. So he was not able, he apologized and said, please, he's not able to do because of that, of that reason. But the current leader, Daniel, a much younger man, himself younger than myself even, if I don't mind, he will give us the word that we trust him. That's why he's leading Vine Song right now. So Daniel is going to preach the word. I think they are going to make it a package. Um, the whole Vine Song team is on vacation right now. So there will be a recorded praise worship ministration the divine song, after which the recorded message will also follow through. That's what we're going to have next Sunday. Amen. So please invite friends and family, join us on that special service on Sunday. We start at our usual time, 
10 o'clock. There will be a little bit of tinkering here. After we opening prayer, uh, and then the, 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 the Apostles' Creed, and the weekly prayer, we are going to go into family, family time. You see that little change between praise and worship and family time will be switched on Sunday. Family time will come before the praise and worship because of the packaging of the vine song presentation. Then after vine song, we do our normal um, communion. Amen. Praise the Lord. I said, let me just quickly throw that in before the communion. Maybe I should have left it during the uh, announcement, but someone else does the announcement, not me. So pardon us. And I also want to, since the recording is still going on, those on Facebook, we have an opportunity to hear the arrangement and what we have on our uh, Father's Day Sunday worship and observance. Of course, we will pray for the fathers when that time comes. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. Amen. Are we ready for our communion? Be ready. Prepare your bread. Prepare your wine. As we come to the table of the Lord to partake of his body that he willingly sacrificially offered, give up for us that we might gain what he was losing. This is a demonstration and confession and attestation that indeed we are in Christ. For it is one thing to be in church another thing to be in Christ. The best setting is you are in church as well as in Christ. But even from the sermon today, we know there are some people in church, but not in Christ because they are busy about many things and neglecting that which is most needful, sitting at the feet of Jesus. The table of the Lord is a demonstration, physical demonstration of our coming to surrender and submit and be in Christ. Because we do this every Sunday, we don't want to be repeating ourselves, saying the same thing, but we've mentioned many dimensions of the importance of the communion table. Do not get used to it by making it just something you repeat mindlessly. No. He said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. For this is a seal, it's a seal to your sonship. When you partake in the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. The body was broken for you, pierced, where the blood and water came out. You know the significance of all those. He poured out his spirit for you, that you might be reconnected to God. You receive back that spirit you lost when Adam sinned and died spiritually. By the cup, the blood of Jesus, it's a physical demonstration of the return of the Spirit of God to you. From the day you were born again, from the time of the Holy Spirit descending upon the church, what Adam lost and died in the spirit, but lived in the flesh, you got back, you gained back, 
and live in the spirit, but die to the flesh. The exact opposite of what happened to Adam. That's why we give glory to him. We remember all these things. Because if you do not live in spirit and die in the flesh, you cannot have a personal relationship of the Almighty God through Jesus Christ, his son. Hallelujah. Please prayerfully, with thanksgiving, break your bread. According to 1 Corinthians, uh, chapter 11, from 23, 24, 25. Break it. Thank God for what he has done in your life. The wisdom of God is so deep. Take it and eat it. Thank God for physical healing. For the Bible says that you are healed by his stripes, by his brokenness of his body. And this bread represents that bread, that body. As you break it, you are demonstrating and reenacting the breaking of his body for you, out of which flowed your healing, out of which flowed water, out of which flowed blood, by which you are healed. In the same manner, pick up your cup, which contains this wine, representing the blood of Jesus Christ poured out for you. This is a seal to your new status as the Son of God, who is now in Christ. All things. You are a new creature. My parents, my because you are a creature that lives in the flesh but dead in the flesh. <laughs> Your flesh is still alive, physically moving around, but you are dead in the flesh. But lives in the spirit. You see, this is a reminder of a New Testament, my blood. Informing you and establishing your new status. You're a new creature that never had been. All things have passed away. The Adamic nature. Behold, all things have become new. The Son nature. The Christ nature. Dead to the flesh. Lives in the spirit. Awaiting redemption. You see, this is a seal to that. As often as you take this cup, do it with understanding, do it with knowledge, know exactly what you are doing and do it consciously and purposefully in remembrance of him. Let us now take it. It brings spiritual healing to you. It connects you to the body of Christ, where Christ is the head, connecting to the body. You do it with great reverence and appreciation in your heart as you bow down to worship him. You do it in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Let's take together. Just take a moment and thank God 
reminding yourself your benefits as a Christian. And pray that you will not only be in church, but will also be in Christ. When you are in church, they call you Christian. When you are in Christ, they call you the elect of God, the sons of God. Do not struggle to be in church and fail to be in Christ. Because when you are in Christ, you are in church. But you're not necessarily in Christ when you are in church. In church, you will find mixed multitudes. And you don't want to be one of those mixed multitudes. Father, we thank you for this awesome, glorious, sacred moments. Reenacting that which you did from the beginning. Establishing your counsel. Restoring that which was broken by the enemy and the children of men in disobedience. Thank you for making us partakers and beneficiaries of this mystery, of this wonderful day that you heed in your wisdom and can only be operated, established by you. For the Bible so that God, for the foundation of God is settled. It is sure, for God knows those who are his. And by this means, Lord God Almighty, you've identified and signified your Lordship over your own, who come to you with a prepared heart in obedience to their salvation, to their election at the foundation of the world. Thank you for bringing us back home and preparing us for the eventual last flight at the revelation of our Lord as he comes a second time. We wait for him and we pray that we be prepared when he gets here. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for healing our bodies through the brokenness of your body. By your stripes we are healed. We contend with all kinds of bodily ailments and illnesses, from emotional to psychological, to physical, to material, to social. Father, they are the symptoms of the fallen world. But in it all, you have strengthened us through the communion table to be able to navigate the paths of this world by the Holy Spirit. We thank you for that blood that cleanses us from sin that we may be able to draw close to you. That we may be able in our bodies accommodate the presence of the Holy Spirit. For he says that we see the blood and I pass over you. Thank you for doing away with that which would have blocked and prevented us from drawing near. Thank you for the spiritual healing, emotional healing, psychological healing, for you have not given us the spirit of fear again unto bondage, but you have given us the spirit of love, power, and of a sound mind as administered by the Holy Ghost. Thank you for this table. Thank you for this service today. Thank you for all the efforts that you are making to remind us of what is most important. Your personal relationship with you. The sonship spirit we receive with gratitude. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you all. Okay. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.